So I'll, I'm going to give a track one summary on behalf of the track one coordinators. First, I would like to thank for all the contributors to track one. We have many exciting and high quality presentations. We receive 82 abstracts. 34 are accepted as the oral presentations. 38 are accepted as the posters. And we are very happy that uh, 32 eventually come here. Um, other than the 34 uh, talks, we also organize one roundtable discussions. So these are very, very uh, the time, uh, this effort that I would like to thank for uh, track one coordinators as a witness uh, being a local coordinator to see how they work. For, we also like to thank Stephen uh, as being one of our uh, session conveners. So for this talk, I would like to uh, say special thanks to Nico to help prepare for that. Um, due to several reasons that uh, and constraint, um, all the Trigon Korea has uh, uh, left or not in this room. So I will try to summarize based on some highlighted selection based on my own bias. I would like to apologize if uh, I did not mention your contributions. It's all super interesting. It's just um, uh, due to my personal bias. I try to um, categorize the track one summary based on uh, five common trends. First is a grid to cloud federation. And I'll talk about the validation of tools in the online DAQ. I'll comment on the harmonization of the interface. And we move to the heterogeneous resources. And finally, I'll conclude with a new paradigm. So we have a very nice presentation from Kevin. Basically, tell us a comprehensive deployment of a lot of resource um, into their computing uh, interface, infrastructure. So basically, um, they are moving from the uh, bare metal implementation over the virtualization and now uh, transition to the container. They try to use and adapt existing industry standard solutions as much as possible. For example, they are based on Kubernetes using a Docker engine and they use a GitLab. The container model is a, is a trend that, for example, in Atlas, we also have a nice uh, uh, talk about the implement the back idea uh, using the containers. And this established the port by running the production Atlas multi-core payloads um, in the resource. And other than that, they also show nice uh, integra integrated monitoring, logging, and constructed a, a GI and CD pipeline. So Matthias shows a very solid talk about, um, if you look at our uh, computing model, it's a tier structure. But if you want to use the opportunistic resources, for example, the PC, the desk, or some uh, private cloud, or high performance computing, how we should do that? And you can uh, also, what they do is that they use the uh, dark, darker image, and then they try to uh, get the on-demand provision of VMs, and they can use that to use and share the high-performance computing. And they have a pilot service trying to make a connection between the best system and also the resource pool. So then when their scheduler try to make a request, they can effectively get the resource. So Michael give a, a solid talk about uh, implementation other than the container. So he show that he basically implement, uh, build uh, open source tools instead of using the expensive commercial uh, solutions. What they can achieve is a, a true high availability setup with overt. So with this uh, self-hosted engine, what happens is that if one of the uh, service die, they still have uh, the, the other VM, so their VM is always up. And with this, um, they, they use the same FS and then in, uh, apply to the star experiment. So about the topic about using the standardized tools, and we have a trend trying to revisit and try to use the standardized tool to customize what we need. In Atlas, we have a major migrations uh, into the more industry uh, 
support it and so come on uh, tool, for example, we use the CMAT, we use the Git, we use the GitLab and Yankings. Furthermore, we also have uh, established a code review process and we try to review the code quality, have a control while we merge the code uh, to the GitLab. And this way we can improve the, the uh, uh, development and also the uh, uh, latency of the uh, maintenance in the later time scale. So we have a very interesting talk from uh, Juno and they demonstrate that the visualization of their current system based on the root, but they also have a new development. They use the game engine and with this game engine, they can be more uh, transparent to the other platform like Windows, the Linux, Linux or the Mac. So uh, this is a nice event display showing his talk. And of course, uh, there's a interesting questions. If you try to use the uh, company developed uh, uh, app, whether what's the lifetime in a 10 or 20 year time scale, it can be supported. But this is a very nice uh, uh, approach. So in either side, we are also a pioneer trying to use the tools outside the high end physics. Big Panda is a project joined with uh, uh, big brand project. This is a biology community project. So what we are trying to do is to move from a machine specific setup to a common functional building blocks such that different community can try to identify the common feature and then you can develop and you can share. In the conditional database, as we know that the requirement is very special, um, you need support they are taking, it needs to be worldwide, it needs to be a grid and cloud processing accessible, and also the data could have a vastly different lifetime, and uh, particularly for each different detector, the data size could be vary a lot. And we have a clear talk from Bell 2 They have a very nice uh, text assignment for Team 2 Institute and have a solid implementation. And I would like to also point out a poster presented by Paul. It's a called Crest. So this is a cross experiment initiative. Uh, uh, several LHCC experiments and also Bell 2 and A62. Um, they join together and try to develop a common code. You can do the conditional database. They based on the standard open API and through the rest of the service. So not all the standardized tool actually uh, optimal for our high physics usage. Jacob uh, did a very comprehensive uh, review and what he did is that he tried to compare different data formats and how the, uh, their um, usage to our uh, particle physics analysis. So he used the LHC B open data uh, using 8.5 million um, LHC run one events B to uh, 3K on. And he checked multiple benchmark, for example, the B flips, encoding efficiency, throughput performance, the cost. And this approach in the IO pattern. If you look at the different file format, for example, compare the root to the HDF5, which is a popular data format used in the machine learning. You can see root has a uh, outperform uh, the rest of the uh, data format. And actually, if you uh, check this code, in, in general, the uh, best performance of all the tests mentioned so far, root is kind of by far the best. So uh, even though we try to approach the review, the standardized tool usage, but we also uh, need to be careful and thinking about what's the optimal for our field. And I would like to move on to the online DAQ um, we have a trend also try to standardize to harmonize the uh, using the more streamlined and also uh, have more common system used for the DAQ. Because we have a common challenge and it's very difficult to maintain as an individual. So the trend is trying to reduce the number of customized electronics. In Atlas, we have a Felix which basically trying to uh, have the uh, support of the codes network switch and you can have access to the front data and then 
you can also support GDP link. So um, with this, you can try to maximize the PC uh, access uh, to, to process the offline reconstruction. Um, with this, uh, you can also try to make an order detector, try to use the common electronics. And similar approach in LHCB, uh, they have an upgrade in 2020. The, in the trigger system, they will upgrade to 30 megahertz. Uh, event rate and the output storage rate is also 2 to 5 gigabit per second. So this approach, they also uh, try to use the uh, uh, PCIe interface and also new support GVT. And there's one more feature that in LCB they are going to have no more hardware trigger. So they have to optimize the cost with the high use of the network and also use the single Brasetto PCIe car. And this will actually try to use both for the offline and the online. S similar trend in G minus two uh, uh, reconstruction. So there's a nice poster showing that from the online to the online to offline uh, development, they try to use the standardized tools and they try to harmonize the usage in uh, three different tier. So with this way, you can uh, reduce the cost and also reduce the maintenance. So we have a talk from the China. It's a development of the software for the non-collider physics experiment. So there's a nice review about the evolution of the sniper in two different versions. And one thing I want to point out is that they also try to enable the uh, multi-threading task in using the Intel TPB. So, um, we, I'm going to continue move on to the heterogeneous resource, and I will give you some example about the successful applications about using the GPU and FPGA. And as a reference, uh, Andrew gave a very nice talk um, about the Catapult project from Microsoft. So from NA62 experiment, they have uh, uh, the developed applied the GPU on their trigger. It's an uh, interesting way that you can use this um, to do the pattern recognition, uh, sorry, particle ID um, in the layer rich trigger system. So the similar development in CMS, they apply the GPU to the uh, uh, pixel track seeding algorithms. And as we know that the GPU is not very good in doing the uh, tracking. And what they have to do is uh, in order to uh, get their uh, parallel architecture work, they use the CA algorithm. So what you did is that you try to get all the uh, doubly, triply, or quarter links and, and their connections, then you can try to run on the GPU. And they demonstrate one benchmark. If you use a hybrid CPU and GPU and compare to the CPU only, you can get a factor of seven event rate uh, uh, improvement by using the hybrid system. And if you want to reach the 100 kilohertz and you have this 14 hybrid uh, versus the 128 CPU, the cost is a cost to factor of five smaller. Fail 2 also have a heterogeneous resource implementation. They use the Dirac trying to uh, develop the distribute the resource. And what they project is that in fiscal year 21, and they currently have a two institute can try to uh, uh, distribute and uh, share the load of the requirement. And we have a nice talk. It's a similar to the track three. It's a QCD calculation using a um, highly paralleled and efficient way of the FPGA. And they have to implement the data flow approach. And if you look at uh, their performance uh, over the bandwidth ratio, they can reach 2.79. This is very good. So our heterogeneous resource end with a, a panel roundtable discussion. Thanks for Ian, which who did a very enlightening panel discussions. The, the panel lasts for more than 90 minutes, and they want to continue because uh, they are so excited. So uh, Maria have to stop at some point. Um, the take home message is that the AI and DL engines are essentially super uh, powerful processors geared at a sparse linear algebra. And as a community, we have to uh, try to do what everybody else did, because that's where the volume and where the low prices are. 
And of course, to do so, the trend is we also have to standardize the language. So the final comments about the vectorization. Um, we have uh, two presentations, um, one from the GMV, the other is from the LHCP, which shows the vectorization can try to squeeze from the existing computing and how much you can get a further performance. It can reach factor of three, factor of five, or factor of four, around this range. But if you want to do more, as Kyle comment uh, in his talk, we need a new method. So the new development is, for example, this is synergy to track tool. We can use machine learning, put into the phase simulation in GMV as an example. Um, you can try to simulate uh, so you can try to train your neural network based on the full simulation. Then you can use the trained model to produce the simulation. So um, in Atlas, we already have uh, one implementation uh, using the machine learning to do the phase calorimeter simulations. In Atlas, we have 85% of uh, CPU time on the simulation spent on the calorimeter. So this is really worth to investigate. Now we can achieve, we can speed up the simulation by factor of 20. So just show you one example. We are in the uh, commission stage. The blue one was the previous phase simulation. The black is the full simulation. And the red one is the phase simulation based on the machine learning that we are commissioning right now. We hope can be able to finish this and use it in the production end of the year. As a conclusion, in track one, we show a several common trend. Is uh, the grid to cloud federation continue, and it means we try to use the container development, and we use the common industry scheduler, and try to use, make use of resource of the cloud. And we also see a general trend: the standardized tools um, is uh, uh, quite popular and is a uh, has a high momentum that we want to use the less homegrown stuff as much as possible. And also we see the cross experiment also the global collaboration industry. So from the FPGA usage for the online DAQ, um, is a trend trying to use a single customer, small transition layer between the front end and offline stack. This can reduce the cost. And we see a couple of uh, successful application of uh, heterogeneous uh, for computing on the online trigger and also on the uh, QCD calculations. And finally, uh, we, in order to do further optimizations, clearly the new implementation, then the virtualization is needed. So as a final remark, this is what uh, um, we have learned from Gordon yesterday. Um, the logo of the ACAD is proposed by Dennis, and th this the, is a, a message about how to get out of the, this mess without reinventing the wheel. And I think many of the track one talk definitely show we are moving along this direction. And as Bruce said, we are e even deeper this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, of course we are deeper. We are in deep level. OK, so <laughs> if there is any one comment, question? OK, very good. So let's thank our speaker again. Good. And let's do the summary of the summary.